Thank you for joining me on the Way Up Podcast with Jeff Knoll. I'm your host, Jeff Knoll. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing a good friend of mine named Colin Ellis. Colin is from Dallas, Texas. He has served in the U.S. Army for the last eight years and is currently a drill sergeant stationed at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. He started investing in real estate three years ago, and in that short amount of time, he's positioned himself to be able to retire by the time he completes his current Army contract. I am so excited to have him on the podcast today. Stick with us to the end if you won't be disappointed. Hey, I am so excited to be on this podcast with my friend Colin Ellis. I've gotten to know him over the past, what, it's been three years, three and a half, maybe four years. years. Yeah. Dang, it's been a Almost. minute. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Um, but so, Colin, tell us about yourself. Um, tell me where you're from, what your career has looked like this far, and any hobbies that you have. Yeah, so um, I'm from Dallas, Texas. Um, I'm a drill sergeant in the Army here at Fort Leonard Wood. Um, so I started investing in real estate about three years ago. Um, and I'm going to be honest, we run Airbnbs, uh, short-term rentals, long-term rentals, um, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, and, and that's, that's really my hobby. I, I really like, uh, interacting with tenants and Airbnb guests, depending on who, <laughs> um, but yeah, I really like doing that. So that that's right now, that's definitely my number one hobby. Um, been in the military for eight years now. I'm um, going on more closer to nine. So, and have you had a recent life change, as in a uh, brand new baby? No, no. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I had a uh, a baby five months ago, a baby girl. Um, she's happy, healthy. Um, definitely changes up the dynamic of everything, uh, but it's been a lot of fun. So, and been enjoying being a dad. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to have you on the podcast because. We recently were having a conversation and we were talking about the podcast and it, it came yeah. up. You were like, man, I want to I want to talk to the military community about yeah. how they can leverage the money that they have to make money to is an investment. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to let you just kind of riff off of that. What what you have done and kind of what has led you where you at but preface with the fact that you're just a normal guy. You didn't start with bajillions of dollars in your pocket. You were a dude in the military. So take it, tell us, yeah. tell us what you wanted to share. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, I definitely started leveraging money about three years ago. Um, we definitely started, um, it's funny. I like home projects and I went, I was going to Lowe's here at, uh, near Fort Leonard Wood and I, and the amount of sergeant majors I saw there, which is like the highest enlisted rank um, out of retirement working. Um, and, and you can kind of tell who wants to be there and who just has to work to live. Um, really motivated me to be like, well, okay, I need to, I need to change what I'm doing. Um, so <clears throat> we, uh, <laughs> funny story. Uh, it was me and my, my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife. Um, we, we were, we were renting this place and it wasn't going well. Um, we didn't have any money, but we had an expensive car loan. And uh, I mean, they're ripping us left and right. We had a $2,000 electric bill and, um, and and the electric is about to get cut off. And we sat together and said, man, we got to change. We, we cannot live like this anymore. We're hungry. You know, she wasn't hungry. She was at college, and, you know, but I was hungry. And I was like, you know, I'm tired of this. Um, so <clears throat> I went out. Every every mil active duty military member um, and reserves as well. After a certain time, they get a VA home loan. So if if I could just get rid of the big sections of my financial life, um, which you know mortgage for me, I don't have health insurance, college stuff like that. Um, if I get rid of that uh, or rent, um, then I would be doing a lot better. And, that, and at that point, that's all I was wanting to do. So I bought a duplex and I got my first tenant in there. Um, got hooked on the money because, hey, I was living for free on one side. I paid zero dollars into this investment and um, and got it. Yeah, got a good tenant in there. Um, and then and then 
I went crazy. I started doing the Airbnbs in my garage and uh, the spare bedroom and sharing my house with people, which was cool when I was in my early 20s. Now, not so cool. Uh, we don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely how we started. Um, definitely all the leverage came off of that initial zero dollar down VA home investment. Um, and, and like you said, yeah, I, I really, you know, I never never got any money from inheritance or not inheritance and and it you know i was i was playing the hole before I, I figured out real estate um and now three years in we're we're looking at a comfortable retirement not where we want to be but but we're good to go um so anybody out there make that first deal the va home loan buy a duplex get rid of the expensive stuff in your life <laughs> So another interesting thing that that hasn't been touched on yet, whenever you went to go buy the first house, the first mm -hmm. realtor that you worked with before you met me, um, yeah. shame, just kidding. He did yeah, something He did something awesome for you because you were looking for a single family home and he said, no, I'm not going to show you a single family home. You, um, you need a duplex. So yeah. go into the hat. Yeah. So again, I was super broke. Uh, I went to a real estate agent and uh, never worked with one at this point. And he was a retired first arm who had a whole bunch of regrets about investing. Uh, he, he was doing at this point after he retired. And uh, and I said, you know, hey, I want it, it, this is different times. I, I say it's only three years ago, but prices are different. I, I can only afford like eighty thousand dollars and I want to buy a single family house and I want to remodel it myself. Um, and maybe earn some sweat equity off of it. And and, he, and I can't use all the, the verbiage he said, because he was still definitely a person. He said, I won't sell you a house. <laughs> um, I'll sell you a duplex. And, and first, I don't want to live in a duplex. Why would I want to live in a duplex? I share a wall, I gotta go outside, see my tenants. Like, it, there's so many drawbacks that are not drawbacks in real life that I thought. And he said, well, I'm not going to sell you a house then. I can't, I can't even afford a duplex. And, uh, and he definitely showed me some of the leveraging tools as um, we had, there was already a tenant in place on one side. So well, if you can only afford $80,000, that's because you can afford, I'm just make up a number, uh, you know, $600 in, in, in mortgage payments every month. But if you have a tenant that's paying you $800, you can afford a $200,000 house, which it wasn't at the time. And, uh, he said, I, I'm, I'm going to walk away from you if you don't do it. You know, uh, thank, thank God for him. But he was challenging. <laughs> he was uh, he was definitely acting still like he was in the military, which good. I needed it. But. May have been challenging, but he gave you a gift because he did. He did get you started in, in that where you had your first experience with a renter, with a tenant. And then you oh. opened up your, you're like, Hey, the wheels are spinning. How else can I make money? What's another opportunity? And you start renting out a room. You realize <laughs> the success there. And then what else can I do? Your garage, you turn your garage into a, another unit for Airbnb. That and then when my best rated Airbnb, how ridiculous is that? It, I that is nice ridiculous. That you is sold ridiculous. me some of these houses. You sold yes. me two, three properties. I mean, the duplex and, and and then that one. You know, the last one is just sick. Yeah. And my garage got rated much better. That's crazy. <laughs> that blows my mind. It but blows my mind. <laughs> you know what? Part of it may have been that they were having breakfast with you. You, you guys, you provided eggs from your chickens. Like there's a personal <laughs> touch that, that they got. Of, they got to actually hang out with you to some degree, yeah. which yeah. is a weird and uncomfortable thing for a lot of people to even think about having strangers in their house staying overnight. But you not only made it work, I, I've heard some of the interesting stories that that yeah. made you not want to do that forever. But <laughs> yeah. as, a, as a young guy before you had a baby, it worked. It, you yeah. made you made the best of it. And you have leveraged that into your the beginning of your empire. So, yeah, um, hopefully, no, I, yeah, definitely. <laughs> that is super cool. Well, I'm I'm excited. I'm hoping that we can get this message in front of a lot of your colleagues. That yeah. way, they can they can hear. Hey, this isn't just something for for people with a silver spoon in their mouth. This is attainable for anybody who's willing to put in some work. Oh yeah, it's, it's so it's so attainable. I, at times you have to fight for deals. Um, 
you can't just take no for an answer. You know this. No yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah. If a, um, if a lender says no, you keep beating on the door of somebody else because yeah. somebody wants to make money with you. Somebody wants to yeah. take that risk with you. You have to mm. keep fighting for it. 100%. Yeah. It's definitely, if they say no, the next question should be why and how. Uh, yeah. Like why and, and how can I how can I get there? Um, and, and if they just say no and they're kind of, well, get with a better bank. <laughs> you know, they're out there. You just got to find them. <laughs> I, I don't know that I've heard you say, how how many units are you up to now? What what do you own for, for doors? Nine. Nine, nine, doors. nine doors in three, three, three years. years. Doors, yeah. Holy crap, you're a beast. Oh. That's exciting. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to format this a little bit more like some of the others. I'm going to start asking you some questions of of how you reach your success. And when we spoke, you said, man, I don't, I don't know if I can come on this because, you know, you're only interviewing successful people, but you are building something awesome and you're you're doing the right things. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so far, what would you say one of your biggest failures has been and how did you overcome it? What okay. did you what did you learn from it? Okay. And one more on that. How if it did, did it make your life any better? Okay. Overcoming the the difficult thing, your big failure. What was that? Oh, my biggest failure was um is is so so we got kind of tight every tax season we get kind of tight because lenders like to see that the properties that you're buying. Um, make a certain amount of income on taxes. Um, debt to income ratios significantly increased for me on a year to year, which is good. Um, but we started getting into some, I wouldn't say, yeah, sketchier loans. So we dev we went, said, you know, these Airbnbs are really working. I want to get a tiny house, which I knew nothing about tiny houses. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know a lick about tiny houses. And, and I had this, this vision um, that what it was going to be, I was going to rent it night to night. Uh, even though the park management, you know, they, the, the guy who's selling it will tell you anything. But he, he said, yeah, hey, you know, you can rent it night to night. Man, so I bought it for, I might be wrong, $23,000, somewhere in that ballpark. And I used personal loan, very high interest rate. But I was like, you know, I'm, I'm paying seven hundred dollars, um, and, and I, you know, I kind of talked myself into it. If you have to talk yourself into it, don't do it. <laughs> um, and so I got this loan. Um, come and find out, we had this terrible neighbor that's like so irrational that you can't really. There's certain people that you can't win with. Um, and, and so, you know, I, instead of wasting my energy, I had, I couldn't do night to night anymore because she was going to burn the house down. So I do month long rentals, but who wants to rent 140 square foot property? Um, you know, uh, you know, after lot rent for over $900, which I'm paying for it. And so it just, it, it didn't work. Um, we still actually have a property, which thank God we have multiple other ones that are you know, doing so well. Um, and, and I think I learned is, is in real estate, you cannot fall in love. And that, that's, that's especially what you do. If, if it's a house forever home, you can afford it, you know, more power to you. But if it's a, it's an investment, you need to look at it strictly as an investment. I don't care how ugly it is. I don't care how pretty it is. It doesn't make money. Um, and does it make sense? Um, I'm not even saying these high interest loans are bad for certain deals, which we can get into because I've, I've gotten two houses off of horrible interest loans on a personal loan, but I make 24,000 a year off of it. So who cares? <laughs> you know, like, um, right. But, but this is a not, well, this is the first time I got into gray areas, gray water, which eventually you're, if you do this long enough, you will get into those. Um, but make sure the numbers add up and don't, don't ever talk yourself into it. So that, that's what I've learned. Um, not, not, maybe not, not do it, but the numbers need to be solid. They need to be in my favor. Um, there's nothing that can happen. You know, um, I'm in control of it all. And I wasn't in, the, in that case. So biggest failure. <laughs> I love the thing. I still have it. I want to own it. I'm almost done with it, the payments, but ah, 
<laughs> hey, but you you learn from it. So you you know mm -hmm. on the next opportunity like that that you're you're going to think some different angles before you just say, Yep, that one. You yeah, know, yeah. you're gonna think it out. So that's awesome. That's it's, it's yeah. not it's not a loss. And you still have the value of the property. You could turn and yeah. sell it. You could sell it for what you paid for it or more probably today. So yeah, definitely you know, could sell it for more. No loss whatsoever. Yeah. yeah just a lesson of it wasn't as profitable, at least the way that you were told. So yeah, that you know. pay into a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. It's cool to have it. It's a tiny house. It's kind of a cool hippie toy. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So think of a time when you wanted to give up what was your driving factor to persevere and keep going? Okay, this was with you. I found a $75,000 duplex, which, correct me if I'm wrong, I think was about $40,000 less than any other duplex on the market. Yeah. About, about. And that's being kind of generous, honestly. Um, it was in a downtown area in Waynesville. And um, I used this is my second deal. Um, and I, I, mean, I wanted it, you know, it just, it made so much sense. I wanted to kind of leave what we're doing, Airbnb in the house, <laughs> it got dangerous. Um, and I really wanted this property. It had so much potential. I mean, it was kind of an ugly duck. It was on the market for a while, but, but like it had some cool things and great bones to a very old house. Um, and it was only 75,000, you know, and it's a duplex. So uh, first thing I did is I called the VA, which the VA is in, I, I want to live there. Why? I want to live there. And they're like, no, because, you, you know, you own a property right up the road. Well, I want to live there. And you can't do that. You know, um, I say that, but you can probably find me. Um, oh, you absolutely can. That's a, that's a underwriter from a specific lenders. Each, okay. each, each lender has their own criteria. So that was, that was a lender problem, not a you problem. Okay. All right. Good to know. Yeah. I, I'm learning still. I'm still learning. <laughs> uh, there's always something to learn. And so, um, you know, I, I was, I was young. I mean, I'm still am young, but I was, I was really young. Um, and I didn't know how to save my money. I, I got money and like the rest of the military community, I went and spent it on alcohol and being an idiot, you know, and, and Hey, have fun when you're young, you know? And, um, I was like, well, you know, I want to, if I can't do VA, because I went through like four or five banks, can I use FHA? As soon as that happened, I got 10 no's and one yes. Um, and so, you know, okay. So we went ahead and uh, we went forward with it and made an offer. Um, the guy was going to replace the roof too, which is crazy. Like this house was honestly perfect, but ugly. Um, right. I mean, look at right over downtown. Um, and, and I was, I was being honest, I, you know, I, I own this spot. This is the original new place. Uh, uh, and I was going to live there. And so I qualified for the FHA and I said, well, you got to bring 3.5% interest or, you know, 75, which at the time I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not, I haven't seen a grand in my account for longer than 10, you know, 10 minutes. Cause we just spend it. Um, so I really had to, to lock down, uh, and, and I saved a lot. Um, and so we went under contract, everything was going well. We went under contract for four months, not, not because of our, our fault, but I think it was four or five months. I mean, it's just crazy. It, it was a long time. Um, Jeff's, Jeff's only house. <laughs> Let's not um, let's not name drop the lender. Let's not do that. No, no, I wish. Um, <laughs> let me tell you what it rhymes with. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> message me personally. Um, <laughs> um, but it, it was definitely not a local lender, which I should have done. Um, it took like four or five months. Um, and the the selling agent was getting impatient that I wasn't telling the truth. It was kind of me and a bug in the ear, you know, and and. Yeah, I thought it was going to fall through because it kept on. You got the, you're going to get it now. You're not going to get it now. You're going to get it now. So finally we moved in and I said, you know, I, I'm going to pay an outrageous amount of money to just move in. Um, and I started remodeling the property and they called after I spent a lot of money remodeling this property and said, you're not going to get it. <sighs> um, 
And that was definitely, I mean, throughout that whole process, I think you talked me, you know, which is a great property now, but you talked me back off the, the cliff a couple of times. Um, and, and that being said, the place I lived in had a tenant in it. So I'm screwed. You know, like, what do I do? Do I go rent? You know, I got 24 hours if they kick me out, you know. Um, and I kept going. And that is that is a at least a 2500 um monthly passive income now. Um and, and thank so, God I fought for it. Yeah, so you, you fought for that. You just said it was a twenty five hundred dollar at least a month. You, you Airbnb both sides now. You don't live in that one anymore, but you did move into it for a year. But yes. before you moved into it, do you remember what the rents were? I I do. Yeah, I Kind of. So there is like these kids that sold weed upstairs. What was it? Like the, four, it was four twenty. Was it four twenty? I was thinking it was four hundred up. No, it was four hundred down because it was the smaller unit. Yeah, four twenty five up for yeah, the which was super horrible number because they. I mean, man, they smoked so much for the neighborhood property. pot dealers. Um, they were getting a, <laughs> yeah. a sweet deal, but super sweet. <laughs> yeah, but you turned it from making from rolling $825 a month into $2,500 a month. You, you triple, this is after I pay employees. you triple, you know what I mean? Your money on that. Yeah. After you pay employees. So yeah, that's, so I, that's mind know. blowing. I'm sure yeah, the people that I sold the it, I'm, I'm sure that the people that sold it to you, if they knew that that was a possibility, which they, they just didn't have the vision that you did. So they would be yeah. heartbroken that they gave, they came off of that so easy, and they did. We got you a roof in that deal. Brand new yeah, that you awesome. you sold me that house for seventy five thousand. I, I it, I'd be, I, I think one hundred thirty, one hundred forty thousand dollars price range would be very reasonable now. Easy, and, isn't that crazy? Oh, man. Easy. Thank easy. God I fought for it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I don't know. I don't know if you are much of a reader or not, but. Is there a book that you have read or a course that you've done that you would recommend to somebody who is on a similar journey on a path and they're, they're looking to level up? Yeah. So um, just uh, upfront, I am not a reader. Um, <laughs> never really been great at school. I've kind of just been good at the things I want to be good at. <laughs> um, I think it's maybe to do with ADHD. So yeah, I can do it too. If I can do it, you can do it. But I, um, I got on YouTube and I looked up, um, I looked up, you know, how to be a millionaire with real estate. Now, be careful because you got a whole bunch of people that say, well, you hear me out. You get $100,000 and you put it in here. That's not real. You know, and so it's good to like come back to roots and, and find someone that does what I do, you know, and um, and then grow up with a ton of wealth or, or get, get it when I left. Um, and so I started watching Bigger Pockets. Um, it's the podcast. Um, and not all of them are, are great, but you definitely get the the real people, the real stories, and, and you get rid of the well, let's just go buy a, a you know 20 million dollar apartment complex, completely remodel and make a hundred thousand a year. That's great. Who has 25% put down on that much money? Right. It's not realistic. And then they sit there and say, I would never buy anything less than 10 units. It's not a thing. It, it's not real. So bigger pockets. I, I like it. I watched it. Um, I, I did. Um, I can't think of the name. The rich dad, poor dad. The uh, mm -hmm. I watch his podcast and he brings good points. Um, but he he's definitely, you know, in his videos, kind of the newer investors kind of going towards the newer investors. He's good. Um, but once you kind of get into the uh, into the thick of it, you know, it, it starts losing it where I hear the books pick it up. Um, so I, I need to read it. If you, can, <laughs> if you can stomach reading a book, if, it, if you can hold it, even just to read 10 pages a day, something like that, I would absolutely read anything Robert Kiyosaki has ever written. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a game changer. So, yeah. If you want to borrow it, if you want to borrow it, I've got it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic. So who would you say a few of your greatest influences are and what did you learn from them? That's impacted you. That can be your military career. That can be 
childhood can be anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my brother, he, um, he, he did the same thing. Um, he did it in a different manner. Uh, he, but, but he, he the same way. He, he never, um, never inherited anything. Uh, he went out, he's like, he's like, oh, I was seven years older. I'm going to do that. <laughs> seven years older than me. And, uh, he has opened up multiple successful businesses and it, and it's crashed because he was young and, you know, got hooked on things he shouldn't have. But, uh, he came back every time and came back and, um, probably for the third or fourth time, he's like, if not a millionaire, a multimillionaire. Um, and, he doesn't have a degree. He didn't, he didn't have a GD. And, and it was kind of that thinking of, and he would talk to, to me and, and he would say, you know, cause, cause I was always more of a rule follower in the name. He said, um, this is what he said. I'm not saying it, but he would say, you know, Hey, degrees are for poor people. I'm not saying that, but he was, he was saying, think how you think, um, and do what you want to do and live the life you want to live. And uh, I learned a lot from him. Um, and I mean, he's a big shot now. Yeah, he's been <laughs> since he's been 18, honestly. Um, and, and he's really been expiring because, you know, we get so suctioned into that, you know, get a degree, get into debt for a degree. You know, you're not going to be anything without a degree. And, and you got to really focus on who you listen to, you know, or, or have they done what you want to be when you're old? You know, work for the rest of your life. Uh, is that what they do? You want to go to college? You know, um, and he brought he brought some good points that really you know influenced me just to be me and and do what I love, which which is real estate. I love it. And it's I didn't like it the first time, but then after the first time, I got the first month to rent. I was like, holy cow, I'm addicted. You know, and so if it's boring to you, go out there, do your first deal. You'll get addicted. It's fun. So what are a few things that you can identify that made a difference for you to be able to level up and, and become successful? So I, I identified, some, uh, so um, I think the not giving up is like a big identifier. And, and, and I learned that luckily really early in my real estate um, game with you. Um, Cause the first one's always the easiest one. And it, it, I, what it is it is what it is. It gets harder, um, so it, it teaches you a level of creativity. Um, was the first one the easiest one? Yeah, I think up to that point of my career, no, and even after, I don't I know like that it. I've had another client fight as hard to get something once once they hear no. I feel like three times they're like, well, this isn't meant to be, this isn't going to happen. And they're, they yeah. throw in the towel, they're done, but you kept fighting for it. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one being here, the second one being where you're talking about where got yeah, you. Yeah, that, got that, you. Was, that the was the easy one. one. Oh yeah. That one was such a pain in the wiener. I didn't love it. I felt so bad. It was only 75,000. I'm, I'm like, going to tell you, you I'm so money. glad that that finally closed because, oh my goodness, it was a roller coaster. <laughs> There's a scene of some movie, and I wish I could think of it right now, where this guy comes in and they say, sell this car. It cannot sell. And um, and, and he made up a story, which you didn't. He was like, I, it's something like Elvis Presley used to drive this car to work and sold it that day. I felt like at the office, because I know everybody like, yeah, it's gone. You know, like, no. I felt like that was you that day, because there was like a big, like, you there know. There was celebration. a celebration at my office, for sure. <laughs> there was. Um. Yeah, so the identifier was getting creative, um, and 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 putting in that work to find the deals. Um, it, not only to find it, finding deals is easy. Closing on deals is another level, and you have to have a certain level of, you know, it. it a lot of hopefully a lot of the members, you know, uh, military and real estate investors of some sort. And so, if y'all have like a W two normal job. If you put that much effort into real estate, you would be disgustingly rich one day. And so it, it had to be like, I might have to take away from the army for a second and really focus on how to impact my life. You know, yeah, on, on that level, $2,500 a month, it's like, I don't even know, 25 times 12. I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, 
And so it's getting creative. Uh, and, and that's what real estate, when you continue to invest, is. is. And that, that was my biggest point of learning that really affected me is, you tell me no, let me look up 18 different loan types, you know, and, and, and hit 20 banks with 18 different loan types until you tell me yes. Um, and taking advice. I took advice. I finally took advice from you, went to a local lender. And that was actually, honestly, the easiest deal we ever did was Hickory, the, the yeah. big spot. Yeah. So, okay. Next question. And I'm okay. just, tr I'm just trying to keep us rolling. Cause I, I just saw the thing. We got eight minutes and 35 seconds, but um, oh. what, what do you do to maintain energy and, and keep your motivation going? I know you're a super busy guy being a drill sergeant in the army that has you working lots and lots of hours. And then you're, when you're off, you go run and you do, you do some of the maintenance, you hire some of it out, but you are, you know, taking care of stuff at your properties and, and oh, yeah. doing a whole lot. You're a very, very active guy. So how do you maintain your energy? Yeah. It, I'm not going to give you some like baloney, you know, you'll find on YouTube. So, you know, I'm tired. Um, <laughs> and, and I think the um, level of motivation that I get is, is knowing what I'm creating. Like you said, I, I have, you know, people that clean contractors now, which I didn't have at, at, at the beginning. Um, and, and so the longer I stay in it, the better I get with delegating. And, and I learned that from the army. So so my problem is, is your problem, but I trust you, you know, and I, I learned to be a good boss. And so that's really what I want to gear into, delegating, having other people manage. But my real motivation keep my energy is I know that my business has expanded so much um, with the, the tools that I've used. Um, and now I have people that work that are great. Uh, and, and my life is becoming less inner. Like I, I had to put in less energy. So I know, you know, after this contract, I'm gonna be real, I, I don't think, I don't know. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to reenlist. I, I love the army, but that motivates me. It's like, I'm 27 years old. I've been doing real estate for three years. I didn't have any, any kind of, you know, big money drop on me. And I can retire at a, at a pretty good salary after three years. And, and I can just focus on being a dad and managing, you know, people that work, I wouldn't say for me, they're like independent contractors, but, um, and just managing that. So that, that's what wakes me up in the morning is I realize my life is currently changing, you know, and it's getting better. And, you know, I don't have to work another 20 hours a week anymore, you know, right. um, I, 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 the drills are the world I do, but <laughs> yeah, real estate. No, not even close. I may go once, once a month to one of the nine properties, maybe I'm not sure. Um, but it was not like that. <laughs> Perfect. So let me ask you this, knowing okay. everything that you know now, what advice would you give your 18 year old self? Okay. Don't wait. Don't listen to people that don't know anything about money. I'm getting told by anybody you can think of without name dropping. You're an idiot. You shouldn't go into debt. You're stupid. Blah, 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 blah. All the way up from master's degrees, doctor's degrees down to the lowest level. Um, listen to your gut. Make sure that the math makes sense. Um, if you, in, in, in another way, if you don't play with big money, you won't make big money. In in the story, I would have no way to play. I'm making up this number, 800, 800 million, whatever it is. I cannot play with that. If I don't have it, go get it. If I gave you a million dollars today and I taught you how to leverage, could you take that million dollars and, and, and make a sustainable life for the rest of your life? If yes, this is perfect for you. You know, um, but play with big money. Go to those lenders. Get the money. It's there. It's available. If you're not rich, and, and especially when you get older, it's your fault. In America, it's your fault. Um, it's not hard. I mean, you got to fight for some things, but uh, are you willing to pick up the phone that, that 18th, 19th, 20th time? Are, are you able to get that deal done, you know? Well, it's, it's interesting you said it's not hard. It is... I would, I would maybe disagree a little bit. There's, there's yeah. challenge. There's challenge. There's challenge. Yes. But if you don't, if you're not willing to do hard things and put in effort to, to get what you want, you're not going to end up getting what you want. 
you you're going to you're going to have to accept what happens and letting life happen to you is very disappointing for pretty oh. much everybody that allows that it's very 100%. disappointing and i was i was the guy that let life happen to me for most of my life just like yeah. well some people some people were born into this family and they right. have they have this opportunity and status that I don't have because that wasn't that wasn't me. Yeah, but and it's that's how I grew up thinking too. Like, yeah, Man. but you and can choose. Have... You get to choose. Hundred percent. As long as you're willing to put in the work. So that's a huge. That's huge. Yeah. And I'm looking at time. We're at three minutes and thirty seconds. I'm I'm gonna ask okay. one more question. Let me just scan okay. through here. Try to make it quick. <laughs> I'll um, try to make it. Oh, you're you're great. Um. Okay. What makes you feel most alive, connected to your purpose in life, and how much time do you spend doing that? Okay. Um, so, and this changes. Um, what makes me feel most alive is that I'm under control of my life now. Um, and, and I know, you know, uh, I'm a new dad. Um, I know that my decisions and my hard work in the beginning has turned into something that... Um, you know, when I when I die one day, if I retire at 28 years old or 27, that um, that I could have spent my life focusing on the things that matter to me and, and not and not, you know, Lowe's, Home Depot, Army. I love the Army. But, uh, you know, at some point, are you going to sell your soul for that? You know, and, and um, that makes me feel alive is that I'm, I'm so close and, and I can dedicate which is unrealistic. I mean, it's not unrealistic if you, if you listen. Um, it's not. After three years, I can dedicate that and just just focus on being a dad and a good husband and and, and the things that I love. I have a free schedule, manage things, and, and just do what I love. But it takes that hard work at, at, at the beginning. So if you're willing to do it, it's all right there. That makes me feel so alive that I, I can provide for my family like that and still be at home. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're creating freedom. I mean, having not having to sell your time, you are creating opportunity if you can just choose the things that that matter most. It doesn't mean that you'll never work again. It just means that yeah. you will only do the work that you want to do. And and whenever you decide this blows, I don't want to do this anymore. Guess what? That's the last day that you ever do that. It's over. Yeah. You're done. I mean, you have yeah. a military contract. You're not going to obviously walk off yeah. on that job, but <laughs> but that's yeah. that's within a few years away, and you're so young, so you have all kinds of life left to do, and you know, so that's yeah. that's exciting for me that you're in that position. I <clears throat> I wish being 38 years old right now, I wish that I would have had this kind of insight whenever I was your age or when I was. 25 or 18. I wish I would have had that because that would have been life changing for me, but it's not too late for me. It's not too late for somebody who's in their forties. Absolutely not. Look what you've done in three years, three years of, of hustling. You have really built something big. So we've got less than one minute. What is, what is something, a last thought, a takeaway, a question for me? What do you got? Okay, uh, you asked something earlier, um, one of the biggest lessons, whatever. Don't buy that expensive house yet. Wait till it's better. Do not buy the expensive car yet. It'll screw your whole real estate investing up. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Get financial freedom. When you're on your deathbed, that's what you want first, is that financial freedom in your family. But except that, love you all. I hope, I hope this reaches the military community. <laughs> Man, I am so glad to have had you on.